Thank you so much for listening to Our People, Our Story, a Sioux Falls Connected podcast. We have a really special guest joining us today, Claude Hone, and I also want to make sure I introduce uh, Garrett Gross joining me here as well. Garrett, how are you, sir? I'm doing very good. This is a this is an exciting morning. We've taken a little break from having our podcast simply because I wanted to have Claude on the program. Uh, Claude is a uh, you know, in my opinion, he's a he's kind of a treasure of the community. Uh, there, he just turned 99 years old here last month, nice. and uh, he's 99 with the attitude of a 17-year-old is kind of the way I think about him, and I appreciate his uh, friendship over the years because there's times he's said things to me, and I'm just like, that's a great outlook on life. And uh, there was one time Claude and I, he was a, a, a realtor for his professional career for many years here in, in Sioux Falls. And we were just driving around looking at old homes and uh, his knowledge on every neighborhood and pretty much every house in the history in the area is just vast. And he made a comment to me that I, I'll never forget. Uh, you know, I said we were talking about what's the key to, to aging and, and successfully uh, going through life. And he made the comment to me was, uh, you know, the toughest part about getting old is your friends pass away. Oh, yeah. And as, as time goes on, sometimes people get more lonely and more lonely, and they, they kind of feel isolated, and they just wither away. And Claude made the comment to me was, my goal is to meet new people all the time, and in the process, you develop new friendships. Yeah. And I thought that was just a very simple uh, philosophy, but also you know very successful to, to share with others. And that's why I wanted to have Claude on the program, so he could share some other life experiences of you know just growing up in Sioux Falls, and then his experience as a as a World War II pilot in the Marine Corps. We'll talk about that later, but I think we've got plenty to talk about just about Claude's experience in Sioux Falls, and we welcome him to the program today. Well, nice to nice to see you again. We actually met last year at the Sanford International Golf Tournament, so I was one of the new people you met last year. Okay. Uh, and and you, I think you probably had more fun there than just about anybody else. You had a good time. I sure did. And you had a, a, a putter with you that day. Oh, yes. Uh, my putter, I, it's 80 years old, and I got that trained. I, I, when I putt, I know the ball's in the hole. I walk alongside the ball, and sure enough, it, it drives my competitors crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> and you've, you've used that same putter for quite some time. I've used it for 80 years. Very nice. It, changing putters don't help. It's all in attitude. Absolutely. So, so now you, you were a realtor for many, many, many years, and you have a pretty cool distinction in the state of South Dakota as being the first licensed realtor. Yes. My uh, real estate license is number one. I I sold real estate when there's no paperwork, just by handshake. Oh wow! <laughs> and and over the years, that industry has changed quite a bit, hasn't it? Yeah, I, I I really am glad I'm not in it now because it's so complicated, and uh, everything is on computer. Yeah. So, do you remember the first home you sold? Oh, absolutely. And do you remember how much it sold for? Twelve thousand. The big McKinnon Park. Gorgeous home. It sold for $12,000. And uh, the farmer said, I'll take it. And he reached in his bib overhauls and pulled out a check. And he said, who do I make the check out to? Uh, that, was the, that was the closing right there. That's it. All over with. $12,000. And what year would that have been that that home was 12000 All the years run together. You know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I understand. It was uh, uh, anyhow. Fifty three is from my notes after from World War Two. Now that home today is probably worth a little more than twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> Just add some zeros to it. <laughs> it's, it's probably worth you know, half a million, I imagine. Yeah. So over the course of time uh, that you've had a chance to see Sioux Falls grow up, uh, this this town really has grown up a lot, hasn't it? It's changed. I used to know every house, what color it was, and who lived in it. Yeah. And I could tell tell you, I could drive by everyone because I'd sold it, and I knew who, who bought it and who sold it. But all of a sudden, I go, drive around now, and then the expansion, expansion, expansion. You can't look yeah. backwards, but uh, I had it pretty great. Yeah, hey, absolutely. So you started your real estate career in 1953 when you were given yeah, license number one. Back on. Yes. And how long did you keep your license active? How old were you when you... Kind of hung up the the uh, briefcase. Oh, I I I sold my last house when I was eighty eight. I love it. <laughs> so, nice. so now you're sort of enjoying retirement, but you're really active. And- oh yeah, every every morning I don't say good God this morning. I say good morning God. Who am I going to meet today, and who am I going to help today? Awesome. That's awesome. So so you, you uh you, your daughter's joining us today, 
and uh, she lives in St. Paul. Yeah, my daughter lives in St. Paul. She feels I can't live alone, and she's right. So, <laughs> so we drive back and forth. I still drive. Look, I'm only 99. <laughs> my, my, my license, my driver's license, is good at 101, and at my age. When the speed limit is 65 on the highway, I go 65 because yeah. I could have imagined it getting picked up. Yeah. I'd lose my license. So, Claude, what, what's your average day look like today? You, you get up, do you exercise? Oh, you yes. <laughs> uh, I have a regular routine. I spend an hour and 10 minutes on me yeah. every day. I do uh, leg lifts and I do all kinds of things, and I have a... Um, a beamer machine in which it opens up my arteries. Oh, wow. And so the blood flows good. And so, and I have a chi machine that works on my back. So uh, that's the first thing I do in the morning. And I lift weights and I drop weights. I drop them and catch them. Okay. It's like a 50-pound pull on my neck. <laughs> and so as a result, I can I have no neck problems. Nice. I don't have a pain or an ache in my body at 99. That's awesome, and, and that's a testament to taking care of yourself. Well, yes, yes, it's a testament to my daughter, uh, who's in the health field, and so she tells me to take care of myself, and which I do. I hate to say this over the air, but I haven't been near a doctor in forty-six years. That, that's <laughs> that's not a bad thing. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> You're doing something right, Claude. And, you know, next year would be your hundredth birthday, obviously. Oh yeah. That'd be a 2020. So you uh, uh, you started your, your life in 1920. Yes. Uh, you, were you born in Sioux Falls, or where were you born? No, I was born in Alcester, South Dakota. Uh, I didn't move to Sioux Falls until I was seven. So I've been I've been uh, I've been here 90, 92 years. In fact, uh, I I grew up at the YMCA. And uh, so I've been a member, I'm still a member down there, so I've been a member of the YMCA for, I'm probably one of the oldest one. I've been a member 92 years. That's nice. <laughs> so you grew up, was your neighborhood downtown, or what part of town? No, I, I, li- I grew up uh, on uh, 9th and Euclid. Then, then I, we moved over to uh, 714 South Minnesota when I was about seven. It's kind of eight. interesting to me, you know, Minnesota Avenue back in the 20s and 30s versus Minnesota Avenue today. Minnesota at that time, there were homes on both sides of the street. Oh yeah, big homes on both sides of the street. It was, and uh, so uh, it went way out to th- uh, 33rd okay. and 33rd Street. Then from, it's a dirt road going to Canton, South Dakota. Is that right? You've made some comments to me about, you know, what an eight, ten-year-old kid did oh, for yes. fun. Oh yes. Uh, First of all, uh, they delivered milk to your door. The, the milk man delivered milk to your door, and the and the ice man delivered ice to your door. He come along his horse, and then they had this uh, uh, his uh, wagon filled with ice, is all covered, and he had uh, flaps. So the, he'd open the flaps. He'd he'd get out ice, and uh, you in your window you you had little cards. You want 25 pounds? Or, see, there was no refrigeration yet. They hadn't invented refrigerators yet. And so did you want 25 pounds this week or 50 pounds or 75? And you'd have the car, and he'd drive up and he, uh, he'd, with his horse. He's, he didn't have to drive the horse. He automatically knew where to stop on every house. The horse did? Oh, yes, the horse <laughs> knew where to stop. So then it'd say he wanted 25 pounds. So he had big square ice, by the way, this ice... He sawed it out of he he out of the river, Sioux River ice. They hadn't invented making regular ice, so you drank the Sioux River ice. He'd uh, chip away at this ice thing with the big tongs, and then he'd carry it over his shoulder with a leather uh, big leather pad and delivered it back door. And it was nobody locked doors in those days. You he took it and delivered it in, into the ice box. Well, us kids would follow this ice wagon because those chips would fall on the ground, and man, we get to suck on those ice chips. <laughs> wow, that was that was really great, you know. A snow cone or a Slurpee before uh, its time. <laughs> there were no fast foods there, thank God. <laughs> so anyhow, we followed that ice man until until he'd go, and and that's near the tracks there on Minnesota Avenue, and so 
uh, we'd take a penny and lay on the tracks till a train come by and they'd smash it. And boy, that was our really something. We get that smashed piece of copper. <laughs> yeah, when I drive down Minnesota Avenue, I drive over those train tracks. I think of Claude <laughs> and uh, you know uh, all the kids that had some fun there just to keep themselves entertained. And you know, so you went to a uh, uh, grade school in the neighborhood and middle or junior oh, yeah, high yeah. and high school, yeah, right yeah. there as well. I went to a low school. And uh, Lowell School for grade school. Then, at that time, they had they didn't did they call it junior high? I forget what they called. Yeah, Washington High. Washington High. Yeah. So, I graduated in in 1938, and and here, a couple of years ago, they had all school reunion. And of course, I went to that all school reunion. (laughs) 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 And. and I was and my nobody else there from the class of thirty eight. Mm-hmm. There was uh, one other lady that lived in town. I tried to coax her, and she didn't feel well. She never went. So, mm-hmm. and there's a, a Washington Pavilion now. Yeah. There's part of the the uh, facility where it's called Alumni Hall, and it's kind of kept to its original state. And in that hallway there, there's all these old trophies. Uh, from you know sports competitions and music and things and there's a trophy that's in the trophy case there from the 1938 high school golf, golf championships and you were on that team, oh right? yes I played I'm a golf addict I think that's one of the good reasons for my health all my life see selling real estate can't play golf on Saturdays and Sundays because people are off work and that's when you sell houses and you can't play golf in the evenings because people are off work so that's where you sell houses so I de- devised my own system. Uh, every morning I'm in the third hole when the sun comes up. So I've always played at least nine holes every morning. And took my shower, had breakfast, went to work. That first customer didn't have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the, uh, Claude, just in his uh, personality and who he is as a person, I mean, you're a salesperson at heart. Yes, 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 uh, yes. I, I figured... Uh, when I got out of the service, I thought, I want to do something where I can see, uh, at the end of the day, the results. And so I took a test. I said, I want to be a tile setter. They come back from the test and said, you're no tile setter. You're a salesman. <laughs> I said, okay. So I figured, I I, I didn't, haven't sold anything my, in my signs when I had a house sale. Instead of sold, I put up bought. People bought from me. I never sold anything. They 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 liked to buy it because I was helping them find the best deal for them. <laughs> I love that. How long have you been selling things? <laughs> I started selling. See, I grew up in the Depression. Nobody had any money, so we had corner stands where today you have sell lemonade. I'd I'd have the pop man deliver pop, you know, and uh, I'd make a penny on every bottle, you know. I'd, at the end of the day, I'd make thirty or forty cents. Then I mowed lawns. I did. We didn't have any money, so <laughs> I did everything to. You sold magazines. Well, I sold magazines. How old were you? Oh, uh, I don't know. Probably eight or nine. And everybody, you know, every kid wanted to get a paper route. <laughs> so that but, was the good job for a kid oh, to have yeah, their own paper route. Oh yeah, but I couldn't route. get one. I couldn't get one, so I made my own. <laughs> I went out to Sioux Valley Hospital. And I, I I bought you know like five papers for for four cents a piece or three cents a piece. And I walked up and down. Do you want to buy a paper? Want to buy a paper? And and and, and make your own. Made my own. Pretty soon I I was selling twenty or thirty papers. I made my own route. <laughs> There's some other life experiences that you shared with me that I think the average person in Sioux Falls takes for granted. And you mentioned to me that when you were a kid, you remember the first stoplight in Sioux Falls. Oh, I sure do. There, there, you know, there were horses coming up and down, and of course the people, when an automobile came, they th- thought maybe we should ban automobiles for this city because it scared the horses. Yeah. And, and so, uh, but then as more and more people got, they decided, oh, they're getting too much traffic. In uh, Minnesota wasn't the Minnesota Avenue it is today. Dakota Avenue was equally it, it took okay. and, and they'd go they'd take these from downtown they'd go out to south and so uh, uh on 21st and Dakota Avenue it was getting too much traffic both ways there 
they put a post in the middle of the road that rotated. This post would say go, then 30, maybe a few, 60 seconds later, it'd turn and it'd say stop. It'd say go. And those kids would sit and watch that thing turn. We thought, wow, what will they ever think of next? Yeah. <laughs> so it was basically just a post that rotated 90 degrees it, every it, so it, many it, seconds. Yeah, it turned. And that was turned, the function. It turned, yeah, it turned automatically. And I thought, wow, that's good to sit and watch that thing turn. <laughs> Entertainment. The first stop so. sign in Sioux Falls. <laughs> that's really cool. Now, uh, speaking of, of watching those first cars come rolling in, do you remember the, the first car you ever had a chance to see? No, I don't remember. Uh, only the rich people had cars. You know, most people didn't have cars. But my my dad was a salesman, so he did have a car. And his favorite was Packard. He always had drove a Packard car. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was just prestige of Packard so if you graduated in 1938, yeah. you know, nowadays you pull into Lincoln High School or Washington High School, every kid has their own car. When did you get your first car? When I got out of the service, okay. I bought an Essex. It had four door. The back doors opened into the wind. Oh, the suicide I tell you, doors. You, you made darn sure those, those are, are locked when you're down or, <clears throat> or they'd spring out of shape, see. <laughs> so... So when you were when you were in high school though, did kids have their own cars no, or no, everybody no, everybody nobody, walked to nobody, school nobody, or got nobody, a ride? Nobody no, had their own vehicle. It was walk mostly walk. Now from Washington High, see the the best route out of town from from the stockyards is come up up through uh, Phillips and Maine mm-hmm. and Eleventh Street going west going west out of Washington High. These cattle trucks would come, and they'd stop at Minnesota, or they'd stop there for a minute and keep going. Us kids would climb up the back of the back of the truck to get a ride, and then going west, it, it the truck would have to slow down because there was a little jog around Grange Avenue. We'd jump off and go home. <laughs> Sometimes so they, it was public transit kind oh, of. Oh yeah, and so that's how we rode. Sometimes they got onto us and they sped around there. And boy, when we got off, we went flying. And, <laughs> and we, when we come home, had all the the, knee, the knees torn out of our jeans. We had to explain that to our mother. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So uh, the other kids at school, uh, you, you participated on the golf team, but did you play any other sports or any other no, no, activities no, that no, you were I involved mean, uh, in? Uh, the, the the big jocks, the jocks were were football jocks and basketball both. There were no other sports <laughs> except golf, <laughs> and there were and uh, and uh, I'm sorry to say that no women participations whatsoever. A I different mean, different time. I mean uh, that was a different time. <laughs> what did you do after school instead of sports? Oh, I did everything to make money. Uh, I I'd go and mow lawns or rake lawns or uh, dig gardens. You know, we everything you dug by hand, you know. I did anything that I could, and so I had favorite, some favorite widow ladies that would hire me for anything. I, I remember one one winter, a big uh, and shovel snow. We can shovel snow. It was a very deep. It was probably about a foot deep, and it was a corner lot. And man, we worked all. I worked all the way around, and then <laughs> I got my helper, and he worked too. So I was probably a quarter block one way and a half a block the other way. We finally got it shoveled, and he gave me a, a dollar. Hey. <laughs> and I couldn't hardly believe it. That was just wonderful. So that was a lot of pay in your eyes for that job? Oh, yes, and that was a lot of pain. Anyhow, I got home. I'd lost the dollar. Oh. <laughs> Never found it again. <laughs> oh, that's somebody else had a really lucky day then, didn't they? <laughs> I found it. So <laughs> speaking of snow, we've had more than our fair share this year, and then that snow has led to uh, a bit of melting and a bit of flooding. Now, in the years that you've been uh, in Sioux Falls, which I know it's only been 90-some years, yeah. <laughs> but ha- have you seen this kind of flooding, or is this uh, kind no, of unprecedented? No, I've seen flooding before, you know, but I've never seen this, never, the, never, never this bad, you know. Hmm. Uh, but uh, you know, out of the falls, us kids, the summertime, we'd leave, we wouldn't tell our, our folks, but if we were 9, 10, we went down, and we'd, we'd get on the falls and... Let it carry us over. We'd swim on the falls. <laughs> See, the falls 
uh, up a little higher up near the railroad tracks, it was a place where all the hobos lived. The hobos lived there. It was a hobo jungle. Mm. And so uh, they, they lived there in little tents and cooked over a fire with a, with a can, you know. And, <laughs> and so anyhow, so the, my routine was we, we, we'd leave in the morning and we'd go down to uh, Minnehaha Springs Bottling Company where, where they made pop. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we'd help them. St- st- we'd stack grapes for them, anything, anything, and they'd give us a bottle of pop. <laughs> so then we'd go over to Crescent Creamery, where after the the, the, uh, the horses come around, there was all the, 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 the there was home delivery of the milkmen. They never kept it. They they dump it into big cream cans and sell it to the farmers for their hogs. So mm. anyhow, we'd help do that. And they'd usually give us a uh, 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 fudge sickle. Uh, not fudge sickle. It was, it was ice cream on a stick dipped in chocolate. Oh, so, yeah? That's kind so of a treat, So we'd get free one of those. That's so, awesome. So we'd get a bottle of pop, have this, then we'd go swimming at the falls. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty, your activity for the summer. Pretty yeah. nice little afternoon, it sounds oh, like. Oh, man. That's awesome. So, you know, we're going to talk more about this later, but once once you got out of, of uh, high school and you, you went to to the service, and we're plenty to talk about that later, but when, when you came back, you started working in the real estate industry, and you were talking the early 50s to today, and there's mm-hmm. obviously been a lot of growth in Sioux Falls in that space, but are there any, you know, moments or any experiences that over the course of the, those years, that was a big deal for Sioux Falls? I accidentally, uh, I, I got into the real estate business by kind of just perchance. Well, it's like Yogi Berra says, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so that's, when I saw an opportunity, I would dare to take it. So anyhow, I was I went down to see Bill Leppard, who was a uh, manager of the Argus Leader, a friend of mine. And I, uh, he said, let's go over to the American Legion, which is on 9th in Dakota, and then have a cup of coffee. We did, and on the way back, we stopped at the stop sign to go to the Argus Leader there, and uh, up pulled a Cadillac. <laughs> and uh, Bill Leppard knew him because he'd done that advertising. It was Chuck Point. He says, Chuck, do you need, need a good salesman? I got a guy here looking for a job. He said, well, hop in. So I hopped in his car and uh, drove... I said, well, I, I grew up in the insurance business. My dad was an insurance man. Uh, he said, well, I'm, I'm just opening a, a insurance and real estate business. I said, well, he said, you want to sell insurance? I said, sure. And when I, I I checked him out for a couple of days, and then went into his office and said, well, I'm ready to go to work. And uh, I said, uh, you're selling real estate? Yeah. I said, well... In case I get a chance, can I sell a house? He said, sure. I sold one on Thursday, one on Saturday, and one on Sunday. <laughs> and he <laughs> says, why don't you forget about the insurance business? And so that's how I became the real estate business. There was no license. There was no nothing. You just did it. <laughs> and you did it all in a handshake, no paperwork. And all of a sudden, the license law came along. And I filled out my application and sent it in. They sent it back, and my license number is one. Yeah, zero, 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 one. <laughs> yeah. So That's I was, awesome. People say, well, they're the number one realtor. I said, wait a minute. No, you're I the number one. Pro- I could prove it. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, had, I had fun with that number, and all the realtors in town, they knew it, too. Yeah. And now there's more than one. There's uh, thousands, aren't there? Well, I, 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 I tell that to Minnesota, different places, you know. Well, my license number is one hundred twenty-three thousand four hundred eighty-one. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think there's seventeen or eighteen thousand plus that have been issued over the last, you yeah. know, sixty, seventy years. Yeah, and there's so. there's hundreds for sure in South Dakota, in, in well, Sioux Falls, because it's, there's it's some like companies with else. hundreds. It looks so easy, and a lot of women went into it as a secondary, and bless them, there's a lot of good women realtors now, but they were, their husband was a doctor, never home or salesman, never home, so. They thought they could, oh, that's nice. I can drive around nice car, and I love people, and I love houses, you know. I almost it's want a lot to, of work, I'm sure. Oh, so anyhow, I never took a vacation for 20 years. <laughs> I walked, walked every day. I worked every day, every day. I had my goals set. 
I set my, when I was 30, I set my religious goals, my family goals, my financial goals. Yeah. I set all my goals down. See, a goal is nothing unless you write down and look at it every day. If you write it down, on my mirror, when I shave, it says, don't you ever die, you tiger, you. Nice. <laughs> so that, that gives you the attitude. Yeah. I say, get going and, and do it. That's fantastic. Yeah, there's, 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 there's some strategy behind Claude's uh, 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 success and, you know, the things he's done in his years. Because we've had those conversations, he and I, just about setting goals and attaining goals. And once you do, set another one. And as time goes on, you, you've, you've gotten to where you've set out to go. And, and I think you can tell just in visiting with Claude about your attitude at, at, yep. at life is just, is I think, superb. And I love, you had told us before we started uh, doing the program here, somebody asked you, so have you lived in Sioux Falls your whole life, and what was your answer to that? Not yet. I love that. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That is just, I think that's the right way. And then you had mentioned, instead of putting on a home sold, you put a, a sign that says bought. Yes, I did, yes. It's I the same thing, but it, it's people. not. You know, I what never you said sold it, anything to help them, and they bought it, you that, know. I think that is fantastic. You should see more of those. That's what you should see everywhere. Yeah. Uh, I, my, I know my um, pictures in the paper oh, four years ago for my 95th birthday, and I got two, three, three letters. People said, you sold me my house, first house 60 years ago or 40 years ago, and said, if it wasn't been for you, I'd never got this house. That was our very first house, and we were short of money. Uh, to get in the house, and you loaned it to us and said you could pay. I think I loaned him twelve hundred dollars. You said you could pay it back whenever you can. He <laughs> said we were so grateful to get in that first house. That's nice. One of the things you do now is you, you you often go to schools and community centers and give presentations. When you go to a school and you, you talk to a bunch of grade school kids, what's the message you share with them? Well, I message is. Uh, my message is if you decide what you want to do and make it a burning desire, you can do it. You can do it. Just But don't wishfully thinking. Most people go through life like you throw up a leaf and it, it, it gently falls somewhere. They, they take day to day to day to day. Sit down and decide what you want to do and then go do it. You can Absolutely. Have a plan and make it happen. Yeah. I mean, my goal is to live to be 103. <laughs> I set that goal years ago. I may have to move it up a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why 103? i got to ask you that. I don't know. I, I just, just I figured that, that. I lived a long life by that time. I set those goals when I was 33, so that's 70 years down the line. I love it. I set my financial goals and my family goals and my religious goals. Did you hit all of those other goals? Oh, absolutely. So I, you'll hit this one too. Oh, yes. I, I set a financial goal that when I was when I was 50, I would have enough money to retire. Okay? So first of all, I say, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. One bite at a time. Yeah. So you, you take this down. I decided if I, if I need this much money selling real estate, I said, I'm going to make $25,000 next year. Now, I was making about 10, and I was probably the top realtor in town. Most of the realtors were making about 5. You worked at Morales, you were making $2,200. And so I was making about 10. I just set this down and I'm going to make 25. So I decided. If I'm going to make 25000 how many homes do I have to sell? See, back in those days, you didn't get paid for listing. It's just morally obligated. If you sold something, you list something and put it back in the market. You didn't get paid for it. So mm -hmm. uh, I divided, uh, I, I, I made about $350 on a sale. So I divided that into 25000 It came to seventy two. I got to make 72 sales next year. So all right, seventy two, that's six six sales a month. <laughs> How do you make six sales a month? Okay, I decided in order to make six sales, I showed sixteen houses to make one sale. Hmm. So I broke that down. How do you how do you get sixteen showings? And and so it came down you you're on that phone calling, you're making appointments all the time, all the time, <laughs> all the time. And so 
I I was it ended up W O R K work a lot yeah. of work. So you 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 get it working at the end of the first month. I'd sold six. Well, what do you know about that? And it worked. Awesome. And, and in February, I'd so I'd sold thir- uh, thirteen. Oh, well, wow. What do you know? And all of a sudden, December first came. I'd sold seventy two. I had a month left over. That's nice. awesome. And so I. Uh, I'd read this book about selling gold, so I so I I uh, wrote a letter to this, telling him how great it was selling gold. He wrote me back, uh, wrote me back, said, "Okay, now let's see, see you do it again." <laughs> <laughs> nice. So that that's changed my life, setting the goals, and and sticking to it. <laughs> now you had to, yeah, you're gone all the time. Your family life, you had to make quality, but. I made the mistake of just goal setting all the time. If I had to do over again, I know I'd make the same mistakes, but but I'd spend more time with my family. Yeah, interesting, great perspective, Claude. And well, uh, you know, we, we appreciate you sharing your experiences and your philosophy. And you know, there's so much to talk. We even before we started, I said we could talk for several hours. Absolutely. And uh, you know, this first little segment, we wanted to talk about your experience growing up in Sioux Falls, and yeah. you know, just kind of perspective on your career and just overall. And uh, we're going to take a little break. We're going to do another uh, uh, little feature on your experiences in World War II because there's some things that you've shared with me, uh, the things you've been through. It's amazing that uh, you've been protected and that you survived them. And you said to me once, you said, even when the life gets its toughest and its craziest, I take a step back and think, hey, what if I'm not even here? You know, no matter how crazy things get, I'm just thankful to be here. And I I appreciate your perspective on that. And, you know, we're going to take a little break and we'll get started up here in a bit. Again, Claude Hone, thank you so much for being here, sir. (laughs) You're welcome. Claude Hone, our people, our story. This is a Sioux Falls Connected podcast. And we will have Claude for our next program as well. Going to be visiting more about uh, his time in the service. That's all coming up. For Garrett Gross, I'm John Small from Sunny Radio.